Hey guys, this is DG. Today we will learn IPv4 datagram format. So let's start. We know that the communication at the network layer is host to host, that is computer to computer. A computer at one location wants to communicate with another computer at some other place in the world. And the medium for this communication is the internet. While posting a mail, we used to write senders and receiver's address on the envelope. Similarly, internet addresses are required to send a message from one computer to another via the internet. We call such addresses as logical addresses. In the network layer, these logical addresses are called IP addresses. If we write a series of binary bits, say 010010011, we say it is 10 bit in length. Similarly, IP addresses can be 32 bit in length or 128 bit in length. 32 bit IP addresses are called Internet Protocol version 4 or IPv4 addresses and provide a maximum of 2 raised to the power 32 addresses. 128 bit IP addresses are called Internet Protocol version 6 or IPv6 addresses and provide a maximum of 2 raised to the power 128 addresses. So, IPv6 gives much more flexibility in IP address allocation in a packet switched computer network. Please note that the data packets in the network layer are called datagrams. Based on the version of internet protocol used, there are two types of datagrams, IPv4 datagram and IPv6 datagram. Let's understand the format of IPv4 datagram in detail. Version number is 4 bit in length and specifies whether the datagram is of version 4 or of version 6. Different versions use different datagram formats. So, this field helps the internet protocol software running on a machine to decide how to process the received datagram. The header length is 4 bit in length and it tells the total length of IPv4 datagram header in terms of 4 byte word. If I say the value in this field is 5, it refers that the length of IPv4 header is 5 words. One word in IPv4 is 4 byte in length. Therefore, the total length of IPv4 header will be 5 into 4, that is 20 bytes. The option field is variable in length. It makes the IPv4 header vary in length too. And it ranges from 20 bytes to 60 bytes. If option field is empty, the value in header length field is 5 or 0101, which makes IPv4 header 20 bytes in length. If the option field is filled, the value in this field will be 1111 in binary or 15 in decimal format. It increases the header length to 15 into 4, that is 60 bytes. Therefore, IPv4 header varies from 20 bytes to 60 bytes. Next to the datagram header is the datagram payload or data. So, the value in the header length field indicates where the payload begins in the datagram. The payload in the IPv4 datagram is transport layers segment. Next is differentiated services. This field is 8 bit in length, out of which the first 6 bits are called code point or differentiated services code point and the last two bits are used for explicit congestion notification. Since DSCP is 6 bit in length, so there can be 2 raised to the power 6 or 64 possible bit combinations. These bit combinations are used to classify IP packets so that one class of IP packet can receive precedence over the other in a network. For example, IP packet used for network management must get precedence for the transmission over any other type of IP packet. Datagram length tells the total length of IP datagram, that is, header plus data. Since it is 16 bit in length, so theoretically the maximum length of the datagram is 2 raised to the power 16 minus 1 or 65535 bytes. However, it is rarely larger than 1500 bytes, which allows the IP datagram to fit in the payload section of the Ethernet frame. 
The size of payload field in the Ethernet frame varies from 46 to 1500 bytes. Identifier, flags and fragmentation offset are used in case of IP fragmentation. Suppose the router receives a datagram of 4000 bytes. It has a 20 byte header. So data is 3980 bytes. This data should be encapsulated in an Ethernet frame, which supports a maximum of 1500 bytes. In such a case, 3980 bytes are divided into small units and packed into separate IP datagrams so that the whole data can be transmitted. This is called IP fragmentation. In case of fragmented data, the receiver should be able to identify that these are IP fragments and they should be combined in correct order to form the original data unit. Fragmented IP packets are identified with the help of identifier field. When an IP datagram is created, a value is written in the identifier field. For the next IP datagram, the value is incremented by 1. However, if the IP datagram is fragmented, the same identifier value is written in all the fragments. Flags are 3 bit in length, out of which only 2 bits are used, called do not fragment or more fragment. If D is set to 0, the IP datagram can be fragmented. If not, it should not be fragmented. The value of 1 in the M field indicates that the datagram is not the last fragment. If the datagram has 0 in this field, it means either it is the last fragment or it is the only fragment. Now the receiver has identified the IP fragments with the help of flags and identifier. These fragments should be arranged in proper order so as to form the original IP datagram. Here 13 bit fragmentation offset solves the issue. Fragmentation offset tells the relative portion of the fragments with respect to the whole datagram. For the first fragment, the relative position is 0. Dividing the length of the first fragment by 8 gives the offset value for the second fragment. Adding the length of first and second fragment, dividing the sum by 8 gives the offset value for the third fragment and so on. In this way, the receiver finds the correct order of the received fragments to form the original IP datagram. IPv6 does not allow datagram fragmentation. Time to leave. This field is used to limit the lifetime of an IP datagram as it travels through the internet. While transmitting a datagram, the source host sets a number in this field. When a router receives the datagram, it decrements this field by 1. If it reduces to 0, the router discards the datagram, hence limiting its lifetime. It is useful in cases where the routing tables become corrupted and cause the datagram to circulate among routers for a long time. Since time to leave field decrements with each hop, so such datagrams will be dropped by routers at last. Protocol When the IP datagram reaches its final destination, the value in this field indicates to which transport layer protocol the data portion of the IP datagram should be passed. For example, a value of 6 indicates that the data portion is passed to TCP. A value of 17 indicates that the data portion is passed to UDP. Moreover, a value of 1 indicates that the data portion belongs to ICMP, 2 for IGMP and 89 for OSPF. 16-bit header checksum helps in detecting the bit errors in the received IP datagram's header. Source and destination IP addresses represent the IPv4 address of the source host and the destination host respectively. When a source host creates an IP datagram, it inserts its IP address in this field and also inserts the IP address of the destination. Source knows the IP address of the destination with the help of DNS lookup. Data or payload contains the segment of the transport layer, which has to be delivered to the destination. It can carry other types of data as well, for example, ICMP messages. This completes the IPv4 datagram format. 
If you have learned something from this video, then please like this video. Share this video so that more people can learn. Subscribe to Tech Terms if you want to learn more and turn the notification icon on. Thanks for watching.